Well, now I'm going to talk about the structure of nature. Nature is composed of worlds. Each world comprises a monolith, a metaphysical sphere, and an egg tray. Now, the monolith is always in a normal world, a zillion gargantuan light years long, and uh, it contains defense mechanisms for the micro worlds contained within the eggs that are fertile within the lying in the egg tray. Now the egg tray itself contains a zillion eggs but only three on a zillion are fertile. This is to make it easier, rather more difficult, sorry, <laughs> for evil to detect the eggs that are fertile. The eggs are immersed in a special substance, a special fluid, that makes it very difficult for evil to uh, penetrate and uh, detect the fertile eggs. Now, of course evil does inevitably infest everywhere, but there is a thing called the anti-concept, which is uh, well, it's you people actually. It is evil when it is incarnated as human beings, which has enormous power, hideous power, and uh, in that case, there have, have to be enormous maneuvers against it. Evil without the anti concept would be simply a balancing factor of nature. In fact, evil was created together with good to balance nature. Now, the metaphysical sphere is the most creative, creative thing existing. It emanates gargantuan heat and, and uh, blinding light and uh, it, uh, inside, in, right in the core, there is a metaphysical environment in which special gods, who are called ball gods, uh, actually live. And of course it's a very large space inside. So uh, there is um, enormous potential to do anything inside there and things can be done inside the metaphysical spheres that uh, cannot be done in the monolith. But of course it's vice versa. Things can be also done in a monolith that cannot be done inside a metaphysical sphere. The uh, monoliths are zillions of gargantuans which means the worlds are zillions or gargantuans, and each world multiplies itself a zillion times per second. So every second that passes there are a zillion times more monoliths. And uh, there is a central monolith that it does not multiply itself. It simply gets enormously bigger, a zillion times bigger, every second and its complexities increase a zillion times every second and uh, that's called the central command monolith and it has no metaphysical it has no a mid metaphysical ball underneath it but but there is no egg tray to protect because that is the central command monolith and it serves to protect all worlds, so it doesn't have to have its own egg tray to protect. Now,
the uh, monoliths are full of gods. Now, in the beginning, it was hoped that you could have more human beings than gods. But due to the anti-concept, due to people like you, it is impossible. There have to be 10,000 gods for each human being existing to guarantee safety in nature. So the monoliths are full of gods, gargantons of gods inside each monolith. And goddesses, of course, so an equal number of gods and goddesses. Rather more goddesses, in fact, because the gods are polygamous. Human beings must be monogamous, but uh, gods are polygamous and they work with their wives as teams. And uh, depending on how powerful and important a god is, the more wives are allotted to him. And the wives are all goddesses, of course. Gods never have a human wife, no. They always have goddess wives. Now, The actual structure of nature is that, and uh, it is uh, something gar gargantuanly enormous. If you imagine that the monolith, the standard monolith, the monolith above this world is a zillion gargantuan light years long, and then there is a, a giant metaphysical sphere which appears tiny below it, but that emanates huge heat and light and warms the egg tray below. And we are simply within one of those eggs. And how large is one of those zillion eggs? Well, each egg is approximately a thousand zillion light years in diameter. So that is the uh, dimensions of things. We are actually all microscopic here. But, uh, or we could say that everything is absolutely huge outside. It's all uh, comparative. It's relative. Well, that's uh, brief discourse on the structure of nature.